Parody, satire, pastiche, homage, fan art, IP, fair use, trademark, copyright. What does all this stuff mean for an artist? Well, I don't profess to know everything, but I'll tell you what I do know. Greetings everyone, welcome to the underground lair where we bring our creations to life. I'm Scott with Surfworks Art Labs. I am a professional illustrator, designer, and mad creator because let's face it, you have to be a little crazy to do this thing called art. Speaking of crazy, if you want to go crazy, just go down the rabbit hole on YouTube on fan art, intellectual property rights, fair use, all this stuff. There is a lot of misinformation about these topics on YouTube and I'm going to weigh in on that. But the reason why I've chosen this topic today is because I have a new comic that I've done the cover for, for Image Comics, Ice Cream Man number 25. It's a horror anthology, kind of a cool book, and I'm pretty honored to be able to do the cover for this. It's a variant cover. It's uh, limited quantities, highly collectible. It is available for pre-order right now at surprisecomics.com. I'll leave in a link in the description of this video. But it's a bit of an homage to something you may all be a little familiar with if you were ever a kid or if you're still a kid. And if you're still a kid, maybe this is isn't the book for you because it's for mature audiences. But anyway, but yeah, I've done this variant cover. Uh, I'm really excited because it, it incorporates a lot of the things that I like to do. And like I said, it is out there. So link in the description for that. So what exactly is an homage and how does it differ from things like parody and satire and pastiche? And uh, how does it differ from fan art? And while I'm talking about all that stuff, I am going to throw up a video of my process for this cover. So yeah, let's get into it. So first off, I want to make this very clear that I am not a lawyer and this stuff can be super confusing and it's a little vague and I don't profess to know all the legalities what is legal what isn't but there are a lot of claims out there on YouTube that just aren't true so I just want to make you aware of some of this stuff particularly when it comes to things like fan art and fair use and what's okay to use and what isn't if you hear anyone talk about those type of things just take that with a grain of salt because all of these things fan art you know parody uh, even homages that we're talking a little bit about today because honestly, all of these things are very subjective and really it takes a court to decide what, <laughs> what is allowable and what isn't. When it comes to fan art, a lot of people online will tell you that it's okay to do if the work is transformative, if you change a certain amount or if you don't charge for it or because if it's an original piece, if you aren't making copies, if it's just that one original, that it's okay to do. And the fact of the matter is that is not true. If you're doing fan art of any kind and you don't have permission to do that from the IP holder, then you're infringing on somebody else's intellectual property. The thing is, you know, artists do this all the time. I, I've done fan art before and uh, most of the time it's really not enforced. You, you can go to a Comic Con and you're going to see fan art all over the place and sometimes right next to the person that owns the intellectual property. Most of the time they're, they're going to turn a blind eye to that. But chances are a Marvel or a DC Comics isn't going to come out with a statement saying, oh yeah, it's okay to do fan art. They're just going to they're just going to keep their mouth shut and and just like I said turn a blind eye to it because they don't want to set that precedent that it's okay but they're probably in many cases they're going to allow it and just because they're not enforcing it doesn't mean that it's it's legal to do fan art exists in this murky gray area uh, and to be honest, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of business sense to go out and, and sue your fans, the people that are creating these fan arts. Uh, although it can happen, it has happened in the past. But in a lot of cases, the, the positives about people doing fan art of your of your IP is that it brings more attention to it. It builds the fandom. It, 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 it kind of perpetuates more awareness of that brand. So there's some good things and there's some bad things, but it's, it's not something that just, like I said, just because people are doing it and people are getting away with it doesn't mean that it's legal. Now, there are instances where you could be safe. You may fall under fair use or maybe you could be, this could be categorized as a parody or a satire, 
but that doesn't mean you still can't be taken to court. You can be taken to court for anything. You definitely have a better chance of winning a case if you can prove that the artwork that you're creating is a parody. A lot of fan art out there isn't really parody. It's just doing something in a different style or whatever. It's not really commenting on the work itself, which that's sort of what constitutes parody. So what exactly is parody? Well, if you look at like a Mad Magazine where they're poking fun at, you know, something in particular, like a specific movie or like Weird Al where he'll poke fun at a particular song, that's parody in a nutshell. And then there's satire, which is generally a little more scathing commentary, more ridiculing, and it usually covers not just one specific thing, but something broader like politics or religion or a movement or something. In addition to parody and satire, there's also what's known as pastiche, which uh, Weird Al does this too. So Weird Al does, he does a number of different things, but if you're a fan of Weird Al Yankovic, so something like the song Eat It, which is a parody of Michael Jackson's Beat It, that's a particular song, but it'll also do a pastiche, which is not a take on a particular song, but a particular, maybe a particular artist's work, if they have a particular style. So for instance, uh, like, if you've ever heard Dare to be Stupid, or there's another one called Bob. Uh, Bob is this thing that's all palindromes, but it's very much in the style of a Bob Dylan song, whereas Dare to be Stupid is more a, a stylistic take on Devo. It's not a particular Devo song, but it's, but it's just using that style, and he does this quite a bit. So he plays around with all of this stuff and the thing is, like I said, Weird Al definitely falls into parody. There's not anyone that would argue with that. Same thing with like a Mad Magazine where they'll take, uh, you know, a particular movie and do a parody and then there's also a lot of satire. I mean, it's, it's, it kind of runs the gamut on all of these different things, but they can get away with it because a lot of it is a bit, you know, scathing and it's commentary or it's just poking fun at something and it's it's without a doubt parody. And that isn't to say that somebody can't try to sue Mad Magazine. Probably not gonna be too successful, so they're probably not even going to try. But you never know. And it's also up to the particular artist or the brand or the the company on what they decide they want to do and how they want to decide to do it. So with it, Weird Al Yankovic, he he doesn't really necessarily have to get permission from the artist to do their song because it would fall under parody although he chooses to do so so he doesn't tip he tries to get the blessing of most of the artists that he's doing the songs for and if he doesn't get that chances are he he won't do it so that's just a decision that he feels comfortable with doing and companies are the same way so uh, I'm somebody who design I do a lot of t-shirt designs and everything and I will upload them to Amazon through their Amazon merch program and they're really strict about any kind of infringement, even if it's even if it's 100% parody, and, and really nothing's 100%. That's pretty much what what I'm getting to is that this is all up to the courts. They will decide on an individual basis if it gets to that point where it is taken to court. But Amazon is very strict. They're not even going to say, oh well, this this probably is parody. You could probably get away with it. So if there's anything like if you do a design that's uh, just a spoof on something else but it's using something like in a particular logo type that matches something that that people might know and it's clearly humorous it's clearly poking fun at something they're not gonna let that through and that's just because they don't want to deal with lawsuits YouTube's the same way there are a lot of things out there that probably could fall under fair use that they're just gonna say no we don't want that because we don't want to get sued so we're not gonna allow you to do that and that's kind of up to them as as the company. These big companies have deep pockets and they're targets for lawsuits. So just to make it easier on them, they may be really st strict on what they're going to allow and what they aren't. So even in the case of something clearly parody or satire or whatever, some companies just won't allow that and that's really up to the company. Now, if you're doing stuff on your own, you can make that own decision. You can you can say, yeah, I definitely want to get somebody's permission to do this or no, I feel like this is parody enough. 
uh, might not be. Like I said, it may just be you doing fan art in somebody else's style, and if somebody decides to come after you, uh, then then you have to you you kind of have to roll with that. And all of this stuff is really confusing, and it's vague, and I think it's vague for a reason. Uh, if you ever hear a lawyer on YouTube or anywhere talking about intellectual property, what you can do, what you can't do, they aren't going to be too specific on what is legal and what isn't because this stuff is always changing and it really is up to the interpretation of a court by court basis, you know, how that's decided and, and that could set a precedent for things down the road and a lot of times that will and that's, that's why things like parody exist because you can look at something and a court will generally say, well, this is parody and that's how they compare things when, you know, when they're making their decision. And there's things that, to me, you know, there's, and it, it doesn't really, it, it depends on, it kind of depends on the medium too. For instance, with music, you, anyone can do a cover song. You don't even have to ask permission to do a cover song. The one thing you do have to do is you have to pay royalties. If you record that cover song, if you put it in your album or whatever, you have to either split any kind of royalties with the with you know the the creator, the writer of of that particular song. And there's also nuances to this stuff. So whereas you know if you're an artist and you sample somebody else's work, if you're just taking a clip from that you loop it or whatever, I'm pretty sure you have to ask permission. You definitely have to, you know, pay royalties if you're using a sample, but I think you have to ask permission to that because you're not, you're not re-recording the work, uh, like the, using the same lyrics, but singing them to yourself. You're, you're actually taking what somebody else created verbatim and you're, and you're, you're cutting it up and you're using it. So I think you have to ask permission for that. I'm not 100% sure on that. I have a friend, Jess, who is a voiceover actor, very talented, very successful, and he can imitate almost any voice, both singing and speaking, and he has this band, it's called Rock Sugar, and it's, in some ways it's kind of a cover band, but they mash up a bunch of different songs and everything, but it's not like, if you've seen on YouTube where they'll take, take two different songs and they'll kind of they'll you know mix them up and everything this this is all, him and his band do all this stuff live and everything and so they'll mix up like a rock song with a pop song and everything and they'll do they do all the original instrumentation and he sings it and everything like that and they recorded an album and it it got the ire of one of the particular artists who was who who they were sort of paying tribute to and this particular artist thought that they were sampling his voice and that's something you can't do. I mean, you can cover songs and everything as long as you're paying royalties, but you can't really necessarily sample that stuff. So, I mean, you can, but you, again, you have to pay royalties and you have to get permission, I think, or whatever the case is. But so they, they I guess they got taken to court and everything and uh, they even ran it through. They've got some software that can determine if whose voice it actually is and it determined that it wasn't the actual original artist, that it was an impersonation and they still had to stop selling that album because I guess the court just decided that, well, even though it's not, you're not actually taking this artist's voice, it's so similar that people are gonna think that it is. And so that's sort of the problem. So, and that's a big part of like, lawsuits and things like that or proving you know parody and satire or whatever there's also how much is it is what you're putting out there does it is it going to conflict with or or cause confusion in the marketplace if something is clearly a parody um that's one thing but if it's so close you can get it I get, in this case it, the it was so close that they determined that the the average person couldn't tell the difference so so they had to stop selling that album crazy stuff. So all this brings me back to this homage cover that I'm doing. And so you may be asking yourself, well, what is the difference between an homage and just regular fan art and everything? So I'll show you some examples. So in some ways, it, in a lot of ways, it is fan art, but it's sort of, it's it's paying tribute. It's not necessarily, I guess it's it's sort of a parody, but this is something that kind of comes up in comic books quite a bit. These parody cover, these homage covers, I think within the comic community, 
take all the courts, take all that fan art stuff outside of the equation. I think the comic book community has just sort of adopted this as something that you do and most people are okay with that. So that's where it is. It's, it's almost like an honor if somebody homages one of your covers. So for instance, now it doesn't have to be comics. For instance, this book here, Batgirl, isn't an homage to another comic, but it's an homage to uh, Purple Rain. And this is perfect because, you know, Batgirl on and the, and the motorbike and all that stuff. And it's just, just, it just works perfectly. Here's another example. So this is an anniversary. I think this is Batman number 400. Uh, it's just got a ton of different artists and everything, but you can see this Bill Sankevich cover here. You know, very iconic artist and everything. So the more iconic the artist, the more people are probably going to want to do an homage. So here's, this is a parody. It's Nat Rat. It's this character Nat Rat. And obviously you pull these side by side and you can clearly tell that this is an homage to that. So when you're doing homage covers, one thing you want to do, if possible, is pay tribute to the original artist. So this is a cover of X-Men Grand Design. Uh, it's by Ed Piscor, and it is based off of the classic X-Men cover by Art Adams. And if you look here, it'll say Ed Piscor, and it'll have the date, and it says After Art Adams. So usually when you do an homage, you just put that after, and then you put who the original artist is, just so people can reference it. And in some cases, this is an Art Adams, re he redid this cover, kind of updated it, kind of with his modern look and everything, based on one of his original, you know, that same X-Men, uh, classic X-Men cover, but he updated it, and on this one, uh, it says Arthur Adams, and it's got the date and then after art Adams and it says 1986 so so he even <laughs> so even artists are homaging their own stuff which is kind of cool now in some cases that's not as easy to do and in the case that I'm doing right now I am homaging the Candyland board game and I could not find I guess I probably could have done more research but typically in board games this is becoming a little more common now we're actually board game creators get credit, but as far as the stuff for Hasbro and stuff, you usually don't see who, uh, and those are more the game designers, not the actual illustrators. You may see a signature, but it's not really as well known, so unfortunately I didn't really pay tribute uh, to whoever designed, whoever did the illustration for the the cover the cover artwork for uh, Candyland. But nevertheless, it is an homage and because it's outside of the comic book genre, I was kind of worried if I'd get a little pushback because like I said, this is kind of, it's, it's a norm in, as far as comics that people do these homage covers and generally people are okay with it. Uh, when you're going outside of that and you're parroting something like that Batgirl cover, which is a movie poster, or in my case, the box art for Candyland, I was, you know, I was was a little concerned whether they were going to okay it, whether Image was going to okay it, because they were, they're probably the ones that, if Hasbro decides, yeah, we got a problem with this, which again, it's clearly parody, but you never know uh, how if Image was going to be okay with that. But they have sort of a tradition, or they they've sort of set a standard with. Uh, this is Ice Cream Man. You can clearly see this is a spoof on uh, Dr. Seuss. And even inside the book, you've got like a spoof on Goodnight Moon, The Giving Tree, and um, this is uh, Green Eggs and Ham. So they've already shown that they're kind of okay with this. They're not too worried about, you know, falling, you know, they're, they're, pretty safe inside that realm of parody. So yeah, they okayed the cover. Now, the difference, I guess the diff the main difference between a particular fan art and one of these homage covers is that I'm not using uh, like the any of the IP from the Candyland. Like Candyland has its own characters. It's got like a Kent, King Candy Cane or whatever guy. I'm not using that. I'm not taking that character and doing my own take on it. I am using the Ice Cream Man characters from the Image Comics, but I have permission to do that. So that's that's sort of, I guess, where the line is drawn. If I was going to, for instance, in this, uh, you know, where they do, this is the Lorax, obviously, um, and, and you can get away with something. You can kind of see where they didn't really show, they've got him face down here, uh, so they're not really showing too much of it, and sometimes you can get away with using stuff. It, it really is, there's just a fine line on what you can do and what you can't, what, you know, but sometimes if you show somebody from the back and if it's not so clear, you can do stuff like that. So you just have to be careful with any of this stuff. And again, I'm not telling you not to do fan art. I enjoy doing fan art myself, even though I tend to 
I, I want to build my own IPs for the most part, and sometimes I will do a cover like this that, that are something totally outside of my own characters, but I like to focus on my own characters. But whatever you want to do, I mean, there are definitely advantages to doing fan art. For instance, you know, when you're doing your own characters, no one knows who they are, so it's hard to get, you know, get people invested in those, whereas if you're doing fan art, you've got some thousands, sometimes millions of dollars in advertising uh, that they're bringing awareness to those characters that you're drawing, and sometimes that can bring awareness to what you're doing. But if you're just doing fan art, and then you start to want to introduce your own original characters, your OCs and stuff, you know, sometimes people might not be as interested in that because they, they love you for the stuff that they're already familiar with. So it's a little bit of a trap. But the, you know, the reason why I'm doing this video, other than to kind of pitch this new cover that I've got coming up and to tell you guys all to check that out at Surprise Comics, link in the description. The reason why I'm doing that is just to talk briefly about some of the misconfusion around, you know, fan art and uh, copyright and trademark and all that stuff because it is very confusing and you may be be more confused after watching this I don't know because there really isn't you know like I said if you want just a straight answer is it okay to do fan art am I gonna get in trouble if I do it who knows uh, chances are you probably won't so if you're somebody who likes to do fan art I would probably encourage you to keep doing that but uh, but the only thing that I am I'm trying to get into people's head is that the people that are like no it's okay to do it's not okay but you, you can still do it you know what i mean anyway i had a blast doing this cover and it is fun to do sort of a uh, different take on something that people a lot of people are familiar with and it incorporated a lot of things that i like to do i've been doing a lot of for whatever reason ice cream you know theme stuff i did a i did another one that was an archie comics that had like an ice cream theme to it and everything so so, I don't know, I guess I'm now the ice cream man guy, but I also like to do these creepy, you know, gross food things. So, you just doing a really eerie, kind of gross take on some of these ice cream treats uh, it just was a perfect kind of mesh with this ice cream man uh, title. So, uh, yeah, I had a blast, and uh, yeah, I'm hoping that I'll probably do some more of these. Uh, we'll see coming up. Definitely check that out in the link in the description. And other than that, that's probably all I have to say for this week. Uh, if you have any other questions about this stuff, like I said, I'm not a, a copyright expert or anything, but if you do have questions, let me know in the comments section, or if you have your own opinions on things like that, if you think I'm totally wrong. I want to hear that too. Just let me know in the comments. I'll talk to you later. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at CircWorks on social media. And now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to CircWorks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.